Hey, it's me, Gail, from Bernina of Naperville. You may not recognize me because I'm wearing this ridiculous muslin, but I wanted to kind of give you a wedding update to just kind of show you how it's going a little bit. So I'm gonna bear it all here. Oh, come on, this is a G-rated show. You know what I mean, bearing my soul, because I don't wear slinky things like this very often, and it's just a muslin. All right, so here it goes. Da -da. I'm walking backwards down the aisle. La la la, la la la, la la la. So here we go. I am going to take it out a little bit in the hips, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. It fits very well through the bust and through here. And then I can't believe it, but I am actually going to have to add about three inches to the length because of my super awesome shoe. So let's talk about how we got here. So here it is kind of made up. I can get a little bit closer to it now that it's not on me. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started with this. Um, when I cut everything out, I numbered it so that I could keep track of things and the right sides because this is an asymmetric pattern. So a lot of the front and the back and the sides are all just one layer of fabric. Sometimes when we're making a standard dress, we get used to uh, cutting two pieces together, like wrong sides together, and then you have mirrored items of each other. But in the case of this dress, we can't do that. And then um, I'm going to tell you that I started with the foundation, but then when the foundation fit pretty well, then I went ahead and just cut everything out for the whole piece. And I um, practiced a little bit with my set in seams. And there's one that I don't think is going together as well as it should. And I actually think I might make a small adjustment on the pattern when I sew this to get, when I sew my final materials together. But also I'm not too worried if this doesn't come out perfect, perfect, because there is a bow that attaches to this piece here. So it, it'll, it'll be fine. I'm not gonna worry about it, but all in all, this went together very well. Now the muslin is not in any way, shape or form flattering or forgiving. It's really stiff. So my uh, actual fabric is gonna be a lot drapier and I think it, it's actually gonna fit better with the fabric rather than this muslin. And um, so let's, um, let's have a look at how I uh, recommended to you how I put the foundation together and how I, um, you know, just, kind of like determined that the foundation was going to fit properly. All right, so to get started on my pattern, I just assembled the foundation piece first. And I did it as if I were working just with my main fabric. I even put in boning. But I cut out all my pieces. I didn't interface them or anything. I didn't get that crazy. But I cut out all my pieces and I you know, did all of the clipping and everything just like I would do if I were making the final garment. And then I put in the boning and I used boning with a casing in it. Nothing special. I think it's the Dritz brand here. Let me show it to you. It's this stuff here. And um, I put it everywhere that it was marked to put it. And your pattern tissue tells you where to do that. So you can see here, so the um, boning goes onto the lining part of the foundation. So the foundation has an outside and an inside, just like the dress. So I just transferred those marks. So I tried on the foundation and it looked good. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna straight up make the dress. So I started then um, constructing the dress going by pieces one, two, three, and four. The first instructions were to take piece one and then piece two and sew them together, but doing a stay stitch on piece two. Do you see that there? That is a little concave piece. So there are lots of set in pieces on this dress. I am gonna give you a little demonstration on how to sew a set in piece. 
And um, that's one of the really important things to learn how to do if you're working with a pattern like this. And uh, I've been doing things like this for a while, so it didn't feel weird to me, but let me show you how I do it. So if you're curious about doing a set and seam, Basically, all you want to do is the same seam allowance that you're using for your garment, mine is at 5 eighths. You're just going to do your regular stitch length, no adjustments, don't make it longer, shorter, whatever. And you're going to stitch all the way down and you're going to stop right at the 5 eighths of an inch mark. Now, most patterns will give you a dot for this measurement. And then you come, I need to go one more stitch here. And then you come back up your five eighths of an inch and stop. That is a stay stitch. So now one way to do this, and you know what, there are people that cut before and cut during. I am a cut during person and I'll explain to you. So what I do is now let's pretend that this is the right side of my material, the right side of my material. I'm going to line up my pieces and I'm going to do my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance again. And now I'm going to stitch, stitch, stitch and I've lined up my I've lined up my intersection here and now I'm stopping. I'm stopping right, 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 right on that dot. Then I'm going to pivot and I'm going to use my super sharp scissors to cut right into that spot without cutting my threads. Then I'm going to turn and pivot my material around and line it up at the end and everything should line up perfectly together and now let's continue with our seam. And when we open this up we should have a nice little set in piece, which we do. Ta-da! And that is how you make set in seam. Another thing I did on my dress was mark permanently on the muslin just because I wanted to really see where the dots are and if I need to make any changes. So I made um, these darts lined them up, see, you know, just to see how I liked it so that I could rearrange if I needed to. And you'll see those markings there on my finished muslin. Now looking on the inside of this, it's got like this weird little connector piece down here, but, um, but yeah, so the foundation actually really works for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. Um, so I, I decided to bone it for the muslin mock-up and I also, you know, made all of my little marks and waist measurement or waist dot and everything and everything is just spot on. I even put a zipper in because that made it easier for me to like zip it up on myself to see how it really feels. That, uh, really fit. Um, it is not my best zipper work. Don't pay attention to that. This was just down and dirty to, to get the fit. So when I cut out this final piece here that kind of like once you make the dress and you can see there this is what the dress looked like before I added this um, overlay. Uh, once the overlay was put on you know, I had to kind of like finagle a little bit the pleats because I didn't like where the original ones went. So I just kind of pleated it and made it look like I wanted it to look. And then I've safety pinned it here to the dress because at the end of the day, when the final piece is constructed, this is going to be a blind hand stitch seam 
down through here to keep this in place. I'm not even gonna attempt that on the sewing machine. This will be really fine to do by hand. But that leads me to, as I look at this finished muslin and how it's constructed, remember how I wanted to add that pop of red? Well, there's a couple ways I could do it. I could make this side of my piece red and then it would be red under here and just, you know, you're seeing a hint of red like that, and then it would be white under here. Or I could put red under here, white would be on top here, then red curves around like this and down the stripe. I could do that as well. I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of either of those options because I think there's too much red here. And then I think red coming along like here is going to make me look like a human version of a bottle of red striped beer. So what I've decided, because this is going to get hand stitched down through here, I'm going to draw a line of where I like this connecting to the, to the dress. And then I'm going to make this is only a one. This is only going to be a two-piece um, piece here with a seam at the top like this. So what I'm going to do is make it three pieces. So I'm going to put red on the inside of this piece. Then I'll have a seam, but you're not going to see it because it's going to be stitched right against the dress here. And then this will be white. So it'll be red attaching to white right here. And then this will be white here and then this will be white again. And then let's look over here at my fabric. So here is my crepey matte um, part of my silk here, and then the shiny part is the other side. So this, I'm gonna call it my little tulip overlay, is gonna be shiny cream. So shiny cream on anything that's white on this overlay piece. Then I'm going to use my shiny red on the inside. We'll see how that works. I actually like the way that this mat looks as well. So there might be a couple of options that I go through for this. I have plenty of fabric so that I can make a couple different versions to, to test them out. So I'm sure you'll comment what you would like to see in the comments. Um, and of course, I'd, I'd love to take your, your comments into consideration. Um, but nonetheless, um, once I get my little pop of red in here, I was actually thinking I would also do skinny, skinny, skinny red piping along the edge here. So that will give me just a touch of teeny tiny red right here so that when I make the bow, the bow will be predominantly shiny on one side, but the inside of the bow will be red, just like my shoes. Oh, so you thought when I said, let's see how we got here, you wanted to learn more about how Chris and I met? Well, <laughs> this, this could be a long story, but I'll try to make it as brief as possible. So it is true. It's true that we have known each other since September 1988. Oh, you know what? He was a transfer to school. I was a sophomore and he was a junior. And he had for two years gone to a private school, but then he decided that no, 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 I don't want any of this private school stuff. So I'm gonna go to public school. And uh, he was sitting there. It, let's stop down for just a second to talk about his hair. He had the best hair of all the boys. These locks, these black, curly, wonderful locks and um but he had like a little bit of a mullet it because he was trying to grow his hair out but he but he had like this mullet and this uh jeans jacket with safety pins and bleach marks and things like that and i sat down next to him and my my come on line i guess was, was a come on line i was like oh so do you think you're bono or something and i i don't even think he really gave me any kind of response or anything and um, I just kind of ended up sitting next to him almost every day, but limited conversation. But, you know, let me just say without saying too much, it, it, our story is a little bit like if Ross and Rachel both had crushed on each other in high school, but then never told each other. So that's, that's kind of the premise here.
<laughs> and then, um, yeah, so he, uh, I think that, that somewhere along the line, I mean, we were just friends. We did not date or anything like during these years. Um, I did go over to his house once because he asked, he said, hey, Gail, I have Star Wars on Laserdisc. And so I went over and, you know, I don't really think that he wanted, it, that it mattered if it was me who came over because back in those days you had to flip the laser disc halfway through and he, he might have just been looking for somebody to flip his laser disc. <laughs> but nonetheless, so, you know, um, he graduated and he went to college like, you know, we did then. And then I graduated a year later and I went to theater school. I went to Virginia Commonwealth University and I was a performance major and I used to write to Chris. I, I can't even tell you what I used to write, but I remember writing to him on like black paper with a silver Sharpie. But so he um, decided for a couple of reasons, I suppose, that he was going to leave Virginia Tech and come to VCU and be a theater major too. His best friend went there. Um, I'd like to think I went there. Ooh, let's see what Gail's up to. But Gail kind of ruined the um, opportunity because when I saw Chris at school, I couldn't figure out what to say. So I just kind of said, oh, I can't believe how big my boobs look in this shirt. Cause that was me trying to be an adult. And then it scared him away, I think. Cause you know, it, it, we didn't really get our groove on then either. So we made it through college without us ever. There, there, was, there was no romance, there was nothing. I mean, I had a boyfriend somehow and I guess that boob line worked on someone else. And then he had a girlfriend and then I graduated before him this time. <laughs> and then uh, I was, uh, was at the grocery store one day and I saw a mutual friend, uh, Chris in um, college, he would juggle and, and do all sorts of things and uh, like circus and acrobatic type stuff. And so, uh, I, I heard from a friend that he was somewhere in Mexico in the circus. And this kind of taxed my brain for a little bit, like, oh my God, he was on a path to be an engineer at Virginia Tech. What, what have I done to him? Obviously, obviously he transferred to VCU to be with me. And then I had a boyfriend and showed him my boobs. And then, you know, the next thing I know, he's like, he's, run away to the circus. So this was in my brain for a long time, for a very, very long time until, and, and I mean, this was on my mind so much that I actually wrote a book. I wrote a book about finding long lost love and there's an underlying theme of Chris things and my life in college and all of those things. <clears throat> so if you're interested in a little backstory, uh, check out Stopping Inertia on Amazon. I'll give you a link in the video. But anyway, that happened and I thought about him and thought about him. And then as fate would have it, one night as I was at my mom and dad's house, my dad um, had passed away a few months prior and I'm in my mom's house and my friend Anne Marie from high school was over. And I had, I can probably thank a bottle of Jack Daniels for this story, but I was having a little bit of Jack, you know, how you do when your dad has died and your mom's in the hospital with eight blockages and an eight bypass surgery and you're just sitting there by the phone or you've come home from a long day of visiting at the hospital and then you, you sit down with your your bff and and you drink i mean you know I, 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 that's how it is so then i got some liquid courage and you know i have to tell you that this was back in the day when the internet was prevalent facebook was prevalent twitter was a thing but what do I do after I'm telling Anne-Marie, like, I, I want to know what happened to Chris Donahue. I have to know. 
Like, did he join the circus? Should I try checking him out at Cirque du Soleil? Because when I Google Chris Donahue, I do not find my Chris. I find some BMX guy. So I decided what any logical person would do. I opened the phone book and looked for him. And lo and behold, not only did I find him, but he was living at his parents' house. Oh my God, can you imagine what I've done? This guy who was on a path to greatness actually moved in with his parents and is probably living in their basement juggling. That's what I thought. So I called him. That's right, I can still remember the phone number, but I called him, it was a landline because you know I got him in the phone book. And I think he answered. I think I remember him answering and then I hung up because that's what you do when you're crazy. So I hung up and then there was more talking, there was more drinking. Okay, oh gosh, it's all coming back to me now. So then I called him again. And this time I got an answering machine. So I hung up again. <laughs> this is, this is the story. This has, you know what? I'm not a whole lot changed from high school, obviously. So, <sighs> I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story because I got a lot of wedding dress to make. So make sure that you tune in to part three and you might hear a little bit more about what happened after the drunken phone call. But anyway, if you wanna see more videos like this or not like this, you actually wanna see a tutorial video, check out the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. And here is to December, 31st, 2022, because that is our wedding date. And now I have a deadline. So in the next video, let's cut out the dress. Let's audition some options for that tulip. And let's talk about cakes. See ya.